But guys, guys, it's the first podcast of the week. What is the matter? What? It looks like you had a headache. No, I was just, I was channeling my memory and energy. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. The sky is falling. I am Chicken Little. Chicken Little. And this here is Frank. Looking great, honestly. Reminds me of Clarence Clemens. I don't know who that is. East Street Brand, Band, Bruce Springsteen. East Street Brand, East Street Brand, East Street Band. E. East Street Band. What was the last part? Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. I ever heard of him? The Boss. The Boss. New he, Jersey. New Jersey. He has that song about New Jersey. He <laughs> sings all of those songs. Yeah. Maybe. I'll never tell. Anyhow, guys, welcome to June. It's the first Wednesday in June, guys. It's June 2nd. Sound the alarm. Um, yeah, I got through May. It's no longer my birthday month. It's no longer. I guess it still is. Because I consider my birthday month a full month on both sides. Okay. So I have till the 11th. Which you always celebrate anyway. I have nine more days of my birthday month. But yeah, June, summer's here, not yet. It is National Bubba Day. Bubba? Bubba. Like Bubba Gump Shrimp? Or like, yeah. Okay. So Bubba, everybody, if you refer to anybody in your life as Bubba, hey Bubba, um, today's, today is to celebrate them. And Bubba came from little tr- children not being able to say brother. So he's my, bro- he's my Bubba. He's my Bubba? Which I never knew that. I never knew it either. So you're a Bubba. What's so hard about the word brother? Uh, lots. Brother. It's hard for me. Brother. Brother. Bubba. Okay. You know what? I'm okay with it. Brother. I'll allow it. Brother Bob. Anyhow, guys. Yes. It's June. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. It's kind of chilly in the shade. No, it's not. It's June. It's hot. That doesn't mean anything. (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, you know, the beach... The Summer. Bees. Did you see the bees? Did you see the bees on Angelina Jolie? No. Ooh. So Angelina Jolie, you know who she is. I don't, you don't yeah, know Bruce Springsteen, so I'm I'm a little concerned about you. Um, she. You know how the bees? There's a problem with the bees. Mm, you know, yeah. They're disappearing yeah, from the yeah, earth, yeah, yeah, and everyone's yeah, always yeah. trying to save them. So she did. Um, she works. She's ambassador for like so many things. Big and, time ambassador. And one of them is for bees. And so she did a live shoot where, um. She has on like it looks like okay like she has on a beach tail or something. Yeah. I don't know. And then the bees are just It's horrifying. You saw it. No. Oh. You describing it. It's right here. But yes. um that's and that's horrifying. It I is. think it may ooh, if I saw it, I'd probably want there to be less bees. Like you know what's a good advocate for bees? Is like the bee movie where you persona oh, you personify right. them, you give them you give them personalities. Right. And then it's like whoa like at the end of that movie when no spoiler alert but like you know when the bees went on strike or something yeah the world was dying i was like yeah this is messed up i've grown to love these bees when you show me a bunch of a swarm that of was, real um, bees i'm like bring out the gas jerry seinfeld that was jerry seinfeld bees are very important and they do need to be protected um the man who was approached to I guess, get the shoot together. Mm -hmm. It was very, very intense. He said it was intense because number one, it was COVID, but number two, because the bees. bees. And so what they had to do was they had to keep the room dark and cold. No one could talk. They put pheromones or something where he wanted it to climb. Oh. And she also had a table of bees in front of her that you couldn't see. And... I don't know why. I guess because they would go there and then just some would come up. Okay. And because that's the photo he wanted. And she stood there for 18 minutes without moving. What if she freaked out? That's what I would have done. Like, I would have been okay. And then I start freaking out and then I would get stung. Right. That would make a good picture. <clears throat> well, that's the. Th- <laughs> no, the after photo would have been funnier. Yeah. I'm completely swollen and stuff. <laughs> Save the bees as my face was fully or, swollen. Uh, is it my girl? You see all those old movies. I think she died from a bee sting. A um, single one? Yeah. The little boy from Home Alone was in it. She was allergic to something. I never saw it. It was one of the... I don't watch tear jerkers. <sighs> yeah, I do. Big tear jerker guy. Not for me. But guys, guys, it's the first podcast of the week. What is the matter? What? It looks like you had a headache. No, I was just... I was channeling 
my memory and energy and okay so that means it's the first it's the first podcast of the week it's wednesday yee <laughs> <laughs> it's wednesday Baba. it's one word wednesday oh man oh man it's good to be here june on one word wednesday <sighs> we started in the fall we went through the winter we oh well, yeah gone through the spring we're almost what are we days away from summer days away. and and uh it's great it's great it's everything's a great, going great everything's going great it's a great time to be alive how can you not be happy on june 2nd yes so it's one word Wednesday. Do we have a word? We do. Yes. Let's jump in early to the word. And the word is engine. Engine. Combustion engine. Engine, engine. Number nine on the New York trend. You know that song? No. Okay. Um. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about engines. Really? Yeah. I knew that. Combustion engines. I didn't know it, but I just, let's just let it flow in. Yeah. No, I've been thinking a lot about engines. Um combustion engines i'm just gonna keep saying it because okay. i like i like the word combustion engine is it is that an engine is that one of the dinosaur engines that will one yeah one that, day soon be extinct that's what i've been thinking about okay so every day you drive on the roads you see more and more electric cars yes and so what yeah i saw something like volvo or i, I i'm making stuff up now but it, it was like a really close date, like by 2025, we want to our we want our line to be electric. A whole country, I think, was well, Norway or Sweden, one of those countries. They are the first country to say we're going fully electric. Wow. Um. So yeah, every obviously it makes so much sense. Everyone's headed in that direction. So the reason why I keep saying combustion engine is because for so long now we've what do you call a car engine? You call it an engine. Your engine. And engine you say block. yeah, the engine runs. You know, I'm going to need a new engine. You put in gas. That's what they say. You put in gas. The gas turns to power. You don't really think about what an engine is. Right. But I say combustion engine because what your car engine is doing is it has little pistons. Right. I'm going to get scientific. And it put it introduces a little bit of gas, which is extremely flammable and combustible, which means it explodes. Okay. And it sparks that. And there's a mini, there's a thousand mini explosions. Wow. Boom, boom, boom. And it, like it, the and, sun. Yeah. And the explosions shoot the piston up mm. and that is creating energy. Okay. So when you think about it on just real raw level, it's like you're literally like you're driving around with this metal contraption of exploding flammable liquid. It seems so barbaric when you, when you think about oh, it. Oh, right. Now that we have like, a, right. now that we are... Heading towards electric cars, yes. which runs off batteries, super scientific, clean, efficient. Right. And I think, you know, when you always say like, grandpa, you use this. Right. And I, I like imagine. Like the old camera that would yeah, explode. Yeah. I imagine. Flash. Not imagine. I know in 50 years, combustion engines are going to be looked at like. Like a we, horse. Like we look at like coal. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. You're just shooting coal in there. Even, even worse. And, and it's like. Yeah, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. It is. Um, my grandmother was born in 1903, and I grew up at her knee. And she used to tell me all about the things. You were rhyming until then. <laughs> my grandmother was 93, stood by her knee. She used to tell me. Um, all the things that were Could in be. her time mm. that weren't in our time. And it was... Um, how they used to light the lamp post in Philadelphia. The the lamp lighter would come around and he would light it and turn light it, it and and extinguish it later in the morning. And how the ice man would come and he and refrigerators weren't electric and you put it into a chest and then that would keep your food cold. And she would tell me all of these. She used to play with a hoop and a stick. And I always would be very interested in her stories. But then I'd also think like, wow, like. We're so modern. Yeah. I'm never going to have stories like that for my grandchildren. Meanwhile, you're using a typewriter. Meanwhile, I'm using a combustion engine car. Yeah. That will be crazy. So that's why I've been thinking about engines. Why do you bring up engines? Um, I saw a fire engine. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to know we're doing, we're doing I saw a fire engine. deep um, digging on this podcast. And I, my, a lot of my brain uh, Rolodex is children's books. Mm. Uh, as you, I was, I used to have a book that I loved to read about a fire engine. The whole book was shaped like oh, yeah, a fire engine. Yeah, you're right. Engine. I remember that. Yeah, my favorite book. Um, 
and I was Chicken Little. This for my introduction. Yes. That's a children's book. And how can we forget the little engine that could? The little engine that could. I think I can. I think I can. And and then he could. He could. He could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really simple book, wasn't it? But it's it's oft repeated in real life when you grow up. People. So people... I think I can. I think I can. I think. Right. I so can. what is the moral of that story? The positive thinking. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's chugging along. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't really remember the book exactly, but right. It was the little engine that could. So it was a little engine and a big hill. And you know, a lot of us we're little engines. Right. You know, we but the moral of the story because I think there was other stronger engines yeah. that were just right. This is easy. This is light work, and you'll see the stronger engines. And if you compare yourself to those stronger engines, you'll never you won't right. get to the top. You can be defeated before you start. Yeah. And this little engine, he was like. You know what? It's going to be tough, but I'm going to just chug along. And the whole step of the way was that positive reinforcement. It wasn't, right. I can't do it. If he said, I can't do this, you know what? He wouldn't have been able to do it. He wouldn't even start it up to hell. But, and nobody believed him. And he said, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. He gets to the top, even with that little engine. Yeah. And once you're at the top, doesn't matter how big or small, you're flying down that mountain. Sail down. Sail on down. Right off the tracks. Turn over. <laughs> 29 dead <laughs> um right so what do you think the engine of the bible is <laughs> uh the holy spirit <laughs> holy spirit yeah i don't right. have an i don't ha i didn't e i don't i had no direction of where to take that uh, i just said to myself if the bible was a vehicle what would the engine be yeah okay so so let's think of it as a car so the bible is the car um we are the driver okay and we're trying to take it yeah. to a destination you know, so you have the car, and when you just look at the car, it's the whole Bible. Yeah. It has everything. But from the outside and, and the interior, you just see the, the the frame of the car, the body, the chairs, the dashboard. But what's under the hood that actually moves the whole thing and right. makes it into a moving vehicle and not just a vehicle? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, they use the Bible as a little show car. Yeah. They put it up, they, they put it in their living room and they say, I got a car in my living room. Right. But it's, you're not, you're not taking that car to the destination. Mm -mm. And what turns the, what's the ignition? What's the engine? What the engine is the Holy Spirit. You need to turn that ignition, that spiritual mm. ignition and see that this car is meant for more than to just look at. Ooh, you know what's reminding me of? What's up? Um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Remember? I've seen um, it once. Oh, well, Ferris's friend's dad has this like beautiful mint sports car mm -hmm. and it's even like in a place where you can't drive it. And they, yeah. they, they, they took it out all day. And um, in the end of the show, they're like trying to turn back the speedometer, you know, uh, so they wouldn't be yeah. caught. But yeah, he didn't want to drive the beautiful car, but they had fun in it. Yeah. So I, I think the Holy Spirit is, is the engine. Um, and that's what you need to think about. It's not a showpiece. You could, why we all, you say it's a living word. Did you ever right. like explain that? Did I ever ask you to explain that? I don't know. Would you like to? Um, take, take a moment. Okay. I don't really know if I would describe it as well as I feel it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, other people call it the living word. There's church of the living word and, you know, so yeah. forth. Um, and I, th um, the way I interpret it is that it is, it's not, if you just read a book, if you just read the little engine that could, you read the words and that's the story and then you're done the story and it's that same t way every time you'd read that book. Yeah. Even though you'd enjoy reading it, it's the same story every single time. But a living word is that you're constantly being inspired and revealed. Mm -hmm. and It's like the room of requirement in Harry Potter where when exactly. you open the door... What is inside is what you need to be inside, yes. not what is inside. And yeah, you can read the same passage three different times in your life, and in three different times, it'll mean something different to you. Right. And none of the one, no, none of them are the exact thing. But that's the point: is right. that it's what you need. It personal, right? Some would say. Um, since you said that, um, the Holy Spirit is the engine, engine of the Bible. What are the brake lights? <laughs> I just want to say something about the Holy Spirit, which is, um, as Trinity Christians, we say that um, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
Now, I just want to say that that doesn't exclude people who don't believe in the Trinity from experiencing the Holy Spirit. Um, we just describe it that way. So we always talk about, um, what is it, Abrahamic religions? Yes. Uh, so if you believe in God, you believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is yeah. the Spirit of God. So we call it the Holy Spirit and we do make these... Um, it's the way we describe three different yeah. manifestations of him. But if you are a different religion in that sense, um, even if you are a really like a, like I, I talked before about Native Americans or whatever, you know, the Holy Spirit is we're, we're all talking about. Yeah. This loving. Even when um, you talk to people who they believe in the power of the universe. Right. They, they say the manifestation they talk about. Right. They talk about law of attraction. Now, these aren't religious folks. Right. I would say they were spiritual in a way, but they say, the oh, we were brought together by the universe, Ooh, right. the stars. I, my belief is that we're talking about the same thing. When mm -hmm. they when they talk about manifestation, mm -hmm. I'm thinking the Holy Spirit. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Like it, it's all, we all have different words for right. if you break it down to what do we mean? I think it's the same thing. Yes, I agree. When I hear about positive, loving yeah. um, energy, I don't care if you call it something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Manifestation. I, I say prayer. Mm -hmm. You're saying you're asking a higher being, even when you're saying the universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, because what is, let's break, what, what's manifestation? I can't just bring it up. It's manifestation is the idea that you, you say, you act like you truly believe and like, you can like pray, like not pray, but. Say, the, yeah, this is already my, like, mm -hmm. you have a job inter interview coming up. The vision and, boards and yeah, the and, and yes. mantras and the. And, and you say, this job's already mine. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, I got the job, I got the job. And you get the job and it's like, I manifested this. Yes. Now, what does Jesus tell us? It's asking you shall receive, right? And so, in a way, are you manifesting yeah, you're right. with through prayer? Or, and the other way around, the people that are manifesting are what they're tapping into, asking a higher power. Right. And they're God's children, at least we say they are. And are they saying, higher power, but like fill in the blank, God, God, this like allow me to get this job, allow me to get this job, right. allow me to get this job. I got the job. My prayers are answered. I manifested it. Right. Two two words for the same. Um, right. The same spiritual idea. Right, and very intentional. Um, very intentional purpose to manifest something. Um, happens of course but there's also the in unintentional manifestations that happen that are bad that are bad yeah. and um i was just um listening to a girl on tiktok who was talking about it and she was saying how to be very careful mm -hmm. and when so be careful what you wish for someone said be careful what you wish for be careful what you believe to be true because you can prove it mm. so what she was saying was if you think um, or if you say to yourself, um, I'm not athletic. Yeah. Okay. And you say, I'm not athletic. And then you, your brain, the universe, the energies will say, okay, she's not athletic. Let's help her prove that. Yeah. Okay. And, and you'll start remembering. Remember when I fell off this, mm -hmm. you know, the ski lift and remember when I got hit with the um, Frisbee in the face and you will create a case. Yeah. And this happens like. Yeah. And then you're, you're in true and total belief that I'm not athletic and I shouldn't even try. The little engine that could, yeah. could have said, uh, and of course he's a fictional. I think he's fictional. I'm not sure. I know Thomas the Tank Engine's real. Yeah. Um, could have said, or you can convince yourself very, very yeah, simply. Yeah, I think I, I've said on this podcast before, I, every day, you know, I say this is going to be the best day ever. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I say this was the best day ever. Mm -hmm. Am I lying to myself? Some would say I am. But- Here's the thing. I truly believe two people can live or a person yes. can live two of the exact same day and they can both have the dependent on, on what they pay attention to mm -hmm. and how they saw it. It right. could have been the worst day ever or it could have been the best day right. ever. And so if you are saying that was the best day ever, this will be the best day ever. This will be the best day ever. When something ha when someone just when someone's hold the door for you, you're like, I knew it. I knew this was the best day ever. Right. And you you miss the fact that you know something bad. Right. Like, oh, you couldn't find your keys for an hour. Mm -hmm. Other way around, if you're like, it's the worst day ever. This is the worst day ever. You can't find your keys. So it's like, of course, 
I couldn't find my keys today. Right. Of course. Right. But um, yeah, and then the and then the thing with prayer is so about manifesting bad things. I have this theory, this religious theory. Okay. I'm doing my doctoral thesis on it. <laughs> okay. That prayer is more is deeper, like to our under in our own understanding than we make it, and so. We say, like, we, we treat it as like a phone call with God. Right. And that's fine. This is just my opinion. Okay. And a phone call with God and um, he says, okay, I'll, I'll allow it or I won't allow it. It's just where I think At it's time. so much more broad and complicated mm-hmm. than that. Yeah. And what I mean by that is I think we're not on so much of an earthly world as we think. Right. We're on, we're on this earth with this underlying you know, this this huge system of spiritual things. Yeah, I heard something. It was like we're not we're not earthly beings leading leading spiritual lives. We're spiritual beings leading earthly lives. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so where my theory comes into play is when Jesus says, No matter what, ask and you shall receive. Right. Ask and you shall receive always. My thing is why do we have to ask? Like shouldn't you mm, shouldn't right. shouldn't you know what I want? Right. Like, shouldn't you give like okay, like I'm living a good life, so can you present me with right. a good wife? You know what I mean. <laughs> um, and what I think is that we like that God, in all of His power and glory, created this perfectly balanced world with spiritual stuff. Where literally within that, it's ask and the and the the spiritual ties that you have the the power of control over is you can create your life of of how you want it. And and that is your prayers being answered is tapping into that, right. tapping into that spiritual yes. workings of the earth. Yes. And that's why I think that's why some people call it the universe is because it's like, I do think it's a universe. I think God created this, this system. And right. the thing about it is because it's the same way he said, ask and you shall receive. And you need to to have this, this faith and this belief and do these prayers to unlock it. You also have the power to do bad. Like, I don't think there's so much as a, a, a stopping in our control i think we're right. mu- i think we're way more powerful than we think yes and so therefore it's not whoa i don't i'm not going to give you that because that's going to be bad for you right it, it's you have the power and right that's the point of free will yes and so it's important to understand that you have the power for both good and bad and it's not it's, it's easy to be passive and it's like Oh well, you know, I'm gonna be a good person, or like karma, and th- right. things are gonna work out for me. It's like you need to understand that you are powerful. You guys are right. powerful. You need to understand that you're powerful. So powerful, yeah. And that can work detrimentally. You know, people that just walk around with clouds over their heads, and it's right. like it's like Murphy's law. Right. I think there's some truth to that, and our is some of it in their power. Uh, you know, it's hard. But you don't want to say someone someone's or, bad yeah, no. bad fortune is in their power, but at the same time. It's definitely not helping if you're yeah. if you're continuing to right. dwell and say no, it's this is just going to get worse. Right. Um. There's always a imagery of the stone in the pond, and then the uh, the, the butterfly s- effect. The circles going yeah. out and out and out. But there's also um an echo effect. Okay. So when you're praying, you know, meditating, saying a mantra, whatever you're doing, um, thinking doesn't have to be audible. Uh. You you kind of think it's just me and God, yeah. And and we say to do that, yeah. So don't worry about what personal other people connection. say. You know, it's just All a personal that. connection. But it does reverberate out. So, like, if you are asking for a certain thing, or, or or giving thanks for a certain thing, or just trying to strengthen a certain part of your life, or or diminish another part of your life, um, we like he's just said we're so powerful. And we're in the whole universe. Yeah. And so just like the stone in the pond, you know, our, our thoughts and our, our words and our intentions are just growing and growing, growing yeah. out and, and rippling all the way out there. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so you want you want to keep it good. Keep that engine clean. <laughs> Regular oil changes and all that. Yeah. Well, you know that from from all of the the physical exertion that you do that. You can't run on an uncared for engine. You can't run on an uncared for engine, you know? Got to keep that fuel intake good or the air intake. Got to keep yourself well gassed up. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure we could, we could just go on and start rifling yeah. parts of the car. And, and yeah, get Mechanic Monday. Mechanic, <laughs> mechanic Wednesday. Or, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so what would the... Ooh, okay. What would the steering wheel be? The steering wheel of the Bible or our spirituality? Well, so we're driving the Bible. We're driving the Bible around our life. Yeah, this is hard. It is hard. I don't don't know if I want to continue down this path. I need to turn on my spiritual navigator. The steering wheel is deciding where in the Bible you want to to read. Like, you know, you you, you read the whole Bible and you've encouraged people to read the whole Bible, but maybe you just need a certain part at certain times. Well, yeah, I would, I would even take it a little differently. Oh, tell me. It's, you, I think that actually has to do with the living word, right? Yes. And so the whole car is the Bible. Yes. And so the steering, so the, the Holy Spirit is what, um, is what makes the car alive. And, yeah. And it's what can it's not just a allow you sculpture. to get, allow you to get places. Right. The steering wheel is what can, is the direction you take it or what so when we said live in word we said you can read it three times in your life and it means something different right and it's the steering wheel of in which direction you're going to take it like mm-hmm. oh I, I take it like this and then someone else can't can't say oh well that's not what it means it's like well you're going to pittsburgh and i'm going to new york yes you know what i mean so i i took it in the way i needed it at the time which was this is up i-95 this podcast can go with the podcast where we had the atlas the driving atlas. Um, uh, maps. The maps, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what the navigator is. You have your little navigator. In the, the navigator, the map the of car. life. And I have one and it's um, the gas pedal Okay. because it puts me in mind of our 23rd Psalm. 23rd Psalm. Which always shouting that out. Which you still find. Always shouting the that out. OG It has its own Thursday. playlist. Yeah, it's, does uh, it? yeah, not just on um, Walk Through Thursday. It has its own playlist. Nice. But in the 23rd Psalm, we talked about the fact that you can... Um, you can push hard on the gas and say the whole entire um, psalm mm. and in, in one breath, which I did. So watch you did. that. You did. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want to make you to lie down in green pasture. Leave with me beside the still waters. You restore with my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. The rod and the staff that come for me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I was anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, or you can just give it a little gas. You decide. Mm-hmm. You can say the first four words. Yeah. Of the um, and that's anything, any ever time, any any prayer passage or yeah. thought. Um, it doesn't always have to be, you know, the pedal to the, the Gettysburg Address. Yeah. You, you know, so you can push your, a little your gas and brake, little gas and brake action, depending <laughs> on what you need. You know, right. You don't want to burn out. You don't want to go right. 100 and crash. No. Too spiritual. No. You gave away all your possessions. Yeah. And now you can't, right. you can't afford There's to nothing eat. wrong with pumping the brakes. Pumping it doesn't brakes mean that you are. In... It doesn't mean you won't get to your destination. How about That's that? That's really true. How about that? People are like, well, I'm not in Pittsburgh yet. And it's like, okay, well, well relax. Slow. Be like uh, be like the tank engine. I think I can. I think I can. Slow yeah. and steady wins the race. Yes. Everybody. Yeah. That's engines. Engine, engine, number nine. Well, that's that's engines, guys. Um, another great pump? one word. One word Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, let us know down below if June. you like engines. If you're a big engine person, mm. let us know if you want to switch to electric. Yeah. Because mm, you know not everyone does. We talked about that a little before. But, right. Um, are you ready to give up the little explosions that are happening yeah. every second <laughs> for a nice clean battery? Next, next one word Wednesday will be battery. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, tomorrow is walk through Thursday. Yes. Look out for that. It's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about a Bible verse. And it'll I be can guarantee that. The first Thursday in June. The first Thursday in June. Yeah. Enjoy your June. Go out. You know, last summer we kind of got yeah. real, real punched in the gut. So make the most out of this summer, you know. Maybe push the gas a little harder, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anywho, it's been real. It's been fun. I am Spencer Cartier, a.k.a. The Love Man. I am Chicken Little. The sky is falling. And Frank is here for the ride. Clarence Clemens. Clarence Clemens. R.I.P. Oh, God. Condolences. Peace, love, and prosperity. Peace. Bye.